You saw in a previous video, I unboxed and described these solar uh, PV combiner boxes uh, and showed some of their faults that they have. But in this video today, I'm gonna go ahead and install these here on the ranch. Now, the first thing you wanna do before starting any project is make sure you have all the materials. Here I have the two PV combiner boxes, the place I'm gonna mount them, which in this case is an old server rack, and the associated wires, fittings. Um, you also wanna make sure you have all the tools you need, that sort of thing. So what I'm gonna do today is I have a pallet on the ground because this is all gonna be portable because we haven't quite figured out exactly where this stuff is gonna go once we get our shop built. So we have the pallet on the ground. I'm gonna mount the piece of plywood to the pallet, uh, screw it down, and then cut the piece of plywood to be shorter, and then take the remainder of the piece of plywood uh, and bring it into this server rack. And this server rack's cool because it has a key. And what I can do is take these rails down here, and they're just mounted with bolts top and bottom. And I can slide this back to create more room so that I can have the piece of plywood in here. And I'll just screw it in with these screws, mount my combiner boxes. I can bring the wires in from the back, loop them around so they have a nice drip loop. Uh, now this is not an outdoor rated enclosure, um, so it still allows some airflow through here to keep these diodes uh, on these panels cool. But it also helps the situation with the fact that the gaskets on these combiner boxes uh, don't go all the way around. I really don't trust the weatherproofing of these enclosures. So, um, But that, that also allows me to lock everything up, keep it all nice and, and clean. Um, and then I'll just have a seal tight coming out. And that's this one here I have laying on the ground already. It's just uh, sitting in the sun to loosen up a bit. That'll come out of here and go to my charge controllers in the electrical room. And then I have all my various wire. I have number six stranded wire, uh, black and red for positive and negative. Uh, some green stranded, uh, that'll be my ground wire. That's also number six. Uh, and then I have a spool of 10 gauge uh, PV wire. And that'll be what I run from the combiner boxes here on the bottom over to the solar panels. And then I have the associated connectors, fittings, uh, and whatnot to make that all happen. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and I'm gonna pull this across, line it up with my mark on the other side. And since I measured equal distance over from both sides, when I snap this, my line should be exactly 42 inches all the way across and then I don't need any uh, framing squares or anything like that that are tricky to use. Now this server rack hinges here on the back as well as the door here on the front. If I just screwed it down to this piece of plywood, it wouldn't allow those to hinge very well. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is measure here. So 17 and a half inches by 22, or I mean 23 and 5 eighths inches, we'll go 23 and 3 quarter inches is the footprint of that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece of plywood and screw it down, and that's gonna be my spacer to keep that uh, hinge sides front and back off of the plywood so it doesn't drag at all. So now with that plywood down there, you can see it spaced it enough so that this back panel can swing open and everything can get installed in there. And I haven't screwed this down yet, but all I'll need to do is run some screws in the bottom and these doors shut nice and easily. And uh, we have the other piece cut, so we can screw that into those uh, rack mount holes after I scoot those racks back, and we should be pretty good to go. Today I want to give you guys a little bit of an update on these ground mounted solar arrays that I showed in a previous video a few months back. I've got 28 panels mounted in this fashion, 16 of them facing to the west. 
So these have been absolutely great other than the need to keep the weeds away from them. I really like that they're so easy to clean. I can just stand on the ground and hose them off and use a squeegee to make them nice and clean really easily. And they're in a place where my parents can also get to them and keep them clean. So that aspect has been working out really great. Now I have 12 panels facing to the east and 16 to the west. And I'll show this a little bit better here in a second but they block each other on the wind and I have them set up with two of the eco-worthy combiner boxes that I've also showed in previous videos. I'll get into more detail on all this, but as a general overview, this is what I've got going on. Now here is the view from the east and you can see the 12 panels and over here in the middle is the combiner box and all the wires run into that combiner box. It's actually an old server rack. And then I have a one inch seal tight conduit that runs back into the electrical room. Housing all of my combiner boxes, like I was saying earlier, is this Hoffman server rack. Now this was on a job site ready to get thrown away when I was in the electrical apprenticeship. And I went ahead and saved it and I've mounted a piece of plywood in it. And you can look at all this. I'll put a card in the corner of this video. You can see kind of how I have this set up. And if we go around to the other side, I have this set up so that I can unlatch the back of this cabinet pretty easily. And this folds open as you can see here. So here we are looking at the inside where these solar combiner boxes are. Now I haven't opened this in quite a few months, so the insides may be a little bit of a surprise, but I can open these up and they still actually look good as new. Um, these panels, I've always not liked how these doors won't open past 90 degrees. It's actually pretty lame and makes it hard for me to show you, but everything in there looks pretty clean, but based on the fact that I have this mounted in a server cabinet, it's not like there's much moisture and dirt that can get in here. So things are looking pretty good. And I know it's hard to see from here with this door in the way, but I'll get you a better close up shot. So here you can see the inside of this cabinet. I have my fuses I can open up and things are running great. Now I have my meter here on screen. I know this may be a little bit hard to see, but I'm gonna probe across one of these diodes and you'll see that I have 0.74 volts uh, pretty consistently 0.73 volts, 0.73 volts. And this is a voltage drop across the diodes. That's just a fact of how diodes work. Now what this equates to is lost power. So if you figure you're running about six amps per string at 0.7 volts, and you multiply that by the six strings that are in this cabinet, you can have right around 35 watts of heat that this back plate is gonna need to dissipate out through the cabinet and I don't think it does that very well. Now the good news is there are no burnt wires in here. It's actually holding up pretty good but in the beginning I was very suspicious of these wires that are tinned and I was concerned that they were going to heat up and have a bad connection over time. So far they've passed the test and I haven't tripped any of these surge protective devices or anything like that. So that's all good news. Other good news is that the wire coming into this cabinet was all terminated properly using my MC4 crimping tool and none of these solar connections have had any issues either. They've all stayed connected very well. And I checked all these with my voltmeter. They're all outputting the correct voltage, which is all good news. I come down with my three quarter inch seal tights into a box. I'll show you here in a second. And that's where I junction from these two panels and go with a home run through a one inch conduit all the way back to my electrical room. Here's the shot on this pull box where you have the three quarter inch conduits coming in from each side and then the main feed that leaves this server cabinet back to the electrical room. And all these connections are made waterproof, which is really good considering this is left outside. So yeah, ultimately this is gonna just be a quick video, but I've been very, very happy with the way this has been performing. And you can see kind of in the background, we're literally on the hilltop. So there's nothing that's gonna shade these panels. A lot of people would wanna put solar panels on their roof or something like that so they can get up above obstructions, but we just don't have that around here. And we really get power right until sunset in the very last moments of sunlight. And it really is great. I'm very happy with these. It's much better than when I had panels sitting flat on top of a shipping container, just held up with angle iron. 
and this is ultimately just temporary. I'm gonna redo all this stuff again when we actually get our house built. I'll put it all on proper ground mount racks and whatnot, but for the time being, it has held up really good. Now, these solar panels were used. The ones you're seeing on this side are 210 watt panels. The ones that were on the other side are 245 watt panels, and I've just been very happy with how this has been performing. We've been able to run multiple air conditioners. You may even hear a little bit of background noise right now, and that's the air conditioner on my electrical room, keeping that nice and cool. So yeah, if you guys want more information on the build of these panels, be sure to check out the video on the card up above. That video really covers a lot more of the technical details of these. But yeah, if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button. Share this with your friends on Facebook and other social media. That really helps the channel out quite a bit. And ultimately, if you have a question, leave them in the comments down below. And stay tuned for more future videos. I've got a lot of awesome content on the way. But just wanted to give you guys an update on what I've done here with these solar panels and how they've lasted through winter. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now.